Right, I think I'm live. Yeah, I think that's working. Hi there, welcome to the video. If you're watching live, hello. Um, I thought I'd do a random stream. Um, I'm going to send out invites in a minute, then we might get some guests in if we're lucky. Um, but I found an object. Well, it's an object I've had in my possession for a very long time. I don't think I've ever shared it on the channel. Um, and I randomly came across it today. And I thought because I fancied going live, I would share this item with you. So we'll, we'll wait a minute and let some people come in. Hey, Damien. Perfect timing, is it? Okay, good. Hi, Ali. Hi, Paul. Rosie, Panza, lots of people popping in. So let me um, send out the invites. I was going to that. I spoke to a couple of people earlier who may be up for popping in. We'll see what happens. So I hope everyone's well. I'll share this item in a minute. I know I've put it in the title, so we'll get to that straight away, but I need, do need to send out the invites. Okay. <laughs> Let's send that. And uh, I'll do that. So yeah, I ha I was uploading a video today, but um, iMovie wasn't playing ball, so that didn't happen. And then I really fancied um, a little bit of social interaction. So we'll see if people come in and want to chat with me. There we go. So the item I, I uh, stumbled across earlier, as I said, this has been in my possession for a very long time. We're talking couple of decades and um, I'll just show you you won't see many of these um, as for its value I have no idea I mean if people want to try and find one of these on eBay please take a look uh, I'd be interested this is a genuine original first world war pickle halb with the spike uh, German helmet my grandfather on my mother's side fought in France in the First World War. Hey, yes, Lex. Hey, Lex. Hello. Look what you've stumbled in on. What a nice helmet. <laughs> Thank you, Lex. Nice of you to, to compliment my helmet. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. Should we do that? Is that better? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I was just saying, my grandfather on my mother's side his dad actually fought in france and he picked this up off the floor on the battlefield wow it's it's kind of creepy in a little way but it's just a, a moment in time right isn't that just amazing and it's so small i'm not going to put it on that would be weird but it it's tiny tiny what's with the spike on the head that's how they did it pickle helps it's ventilated. It's got little holes, and there's a hole in here, and it ventilates. I know what it is. I know what it's for. You stick it in a pie, and it lets the steam come out. It's a bit like that. Yeah. <laughs> my nan, no, my granddad actually used to have little blackbirds that you put in a pie with their yeah. mouth. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that. I stumbled across it today and thought that is, it should be in a museum, really, but it just sits in my spare room. So how are you? I'm okay. Um, uh, um, so war finds, my granddad had one as well. I can't remember what country he was in, maybe France or Belgium, wherever King Leopold's palace is. I don't know where that is. My history and geography is awful. But um, apparently you got like, you know, race to the ground and stuff. And my granddad was, one of the people that was going through it, and there's a little carved head statue type thing. Um, I can go grab it actually. And um, he, he rescued it, liberated it, stole it. Terrible. Wow. From King Leopold's Palace. But yeah, I'll go grab it. Hold on. Well, that will be a, an absolutely unique item. I mean, there will be these about, but not many. 
Um, if you're just joining me, yeah, it's just a random stream. Hopefully, we're going to get some people pop in. Um, and I thought I'd share this. So this, it's not an item that's yeah. for sale. It's not to do with eBay. I just thought I'd share it. Um, I feel like it's not really mine. Oh, cool. Yeah. So um, it's some king of Belgium, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, that's from King Leopold's Palace. So that's pretty cool. Stuck, is... stuck to the wall with a bit of blue tack, as you do, you know. But yeah, that's like proper mighty old. But yeah. um, apparently, you know, like the place was obviously getting, you know, attacked and destroyed and everything. And, you know, my granddad, the artist, um, was like, no, that's not getting destroyed. So we see it as liberation and, you know, keeping a part of history rather than just stealing from a palace. Absolutely. Yeah, well, so, so many amazing buildings and places were just raised to the ground. So, yeah. yeah it probably would have been, you know, burnt after that or something. So, yeah. You know, yeah. Hi, Kelly. Yeah. Kelly likes Kelly likes my helmet, I think. Um, yeah, rainbow resellers. Yeah, it's just one of those items. As I was saying, it, it it's not going to be sold. Uh, it will be kept in my possession, passed on to Ellen if she will be. I'm not sure how she will feel about receiving yeah. this at some point, but Ellen Ellen will pro would want to like spray paint it and like you know put patches on it or something. <laughs> I you you broke up crazy there. What Ellen would do would put Mickey Mouse ears on it or something. She's obsessed with uh, making Mickey. Yeah. Mouse but yeah yeah um oh <laughs> sorry pete didn't see you there hello hi lex how you doing hello peter i want one of those helmets brilliant oh my my shirt's all a bit weird oh yeah you're strobing like crazy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that is an amazing helmet it's fantastic so you actually picked it I've up heard it all before yeah he I'm, he was, uh, I don't know the exact story, but I think it was some, I'm not 100% on that, but it was certainly in France. He was He was active. He survived. Uh, he survived. We know that because he bought this back in his duffel bag, basically. It's just bizarre, isn't it? it yeah. It's, it's quite worn. It's awesome action in its time, I think. It's all leather. And it's got this brass eagle and a little amazing. bit of like it's such a classic kind of look isn't it you know you always imagine those first world war germans but it's i didn't I, I didn't think they actually wore them it's like well yeah so impractical right on yeah. uh, on a very muddy battlefield you've got this great cumbersome thing but yeah how are you peter you okay yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Just been listening all day today, one of those days. I'm trying to get my mojo going. Yes, I've not listed a thing today. I have been sending out um, packages to subscribers, so I don't feel too bad. <laughs> I think my mum's got, um, I was thinking about what war stuff we've got. And I mean, I haven't got any, but I know my mum's got a piece of shrapnel that flew through when she was at home with her mum and dad, it flew through, flew through the window and narrowly missed someone, and she's still got that piece of shrapnel. Um, but wow. I don't know if she's got much else. She's got maybe a few ration books and things like that because um, our boys have used them when they've done projects on World War II. So that's I used quite to collect stuff. Um, my grandfather on my father's side was was served in the war, but he, he stayed in this country more like not really home guard, but he was defence, and he used to collect stuff. Um, I've still got some stuff, but I don't know where it is. I, I could show you pictures and stuff, but I'm not sure where I've kept it. Well, you got that haul as well, didn't you, of all those photographs? Uh, was it? Still got them. You still got them. I mean, that was so interesting, and it's, of course, difficult to know what to do with that kind of stuff because it's so, so interesting and you, you kind of think oh well should it should it go to a museum or do you sell it or and there's always at my boot fairs there's always guys who are selling that kind of thing you get the odd stall of um military military isn't it and i i love looking at it 
but it's one of those where I haven't got a clue about it, but mm. it's just so interesting. Yeah, the collection of, of photos, that was a really divisive thing. I got a lot of negativity from that video yeah. because of the, the German Nazi connection, obviously. Yeah. But I see it as a historical... Oh, object. totally. Yeah. Yeah. With, with that, though, a lot of people forget that, uh, you know, a lot of Germans suffered in the war as well. There's, you know, there's two, three sides to it, isn't there? And, you know, just because they seem... I'm going to go and change this shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK. But just, just because they were, they were our enemy doesn't mean that they didn't suffer as well. They all had this, you know, similar kind of war stories, didn't they? And it is still part of history. Mm. Um. You know, a lot of them didn't want to fight as well. Oh, and I know? guess a lot were, were conscripts who didn't have a choice regardless. Mm. I don't know how they how they signed people up. But, wow, that was quick. No, no, um, so got it yeah. out of the door. Aviation Media there says a basic version of that helmet selling for 465 on eBay. Mm. Um, yeah, but somebody else was saying uh, it's so cool. One of those items that no matter how much it's worth, it's priceless to you after being in the family for so long. Exactly. There's things that you, you don't, I don't feel like I really own this. I was given it, it's it's literally one of those kind of passed down the family things. And, and I don't want to be the idiot who sticks it on eBay. That's not you know how it's going to go but yeah if if ellen isn't interested it may just be end up being donated to a museum i don't know and and the little bit of history i have of it could stay with it then you see what i mean if i if i donated it to a museum and, and explained who my grandfather was and the little bit i know about his service that would be quite i mean e even if you do sell it on ebay it's bound to go to someone who will value it you know, and, and they get the value out of it, but um, yeah, but maybe nobody else would. Then I don't know. Yeah, but I'm, <clears throat> I'm I not. Don't, I don't know. Oh, David says someone trying to get over nine hundred for a similar helmet wouldn't surprise me. Wow. Have you ever thought of taking it on anything like um, Antiques Roadshow and stuff? Because that's what we were going to do with um, King Leopold's head. It's uh, a yeah. We're going to try and take it on with that. That would be a fun day out if, yeah. yeah. I don't know if they're still filming that. I guess they are. Um, I think they're starting up again, like, well, actually should be soon. Um, I it will be on a bigger scale. But, yeah. I may look into that, actually, because I've, like, it's about that collection of, of the Second World War pictures that are just a general kind of guy took, um, that would be great to get somebody in the know to look at. Um, might even get on the telly. Hey, it's <laughs> like on the telly. If you went on with the helmet, they'd make you put it on, wouldn't they? Oh. For the telly. It's so small. It feels like it would fit a, a small teenager. Wow. It, that, that's a bit of a scary thought is maybe it was. It yeah. Yeah. Um, Damien had a goal to list three grand's worth of new stock in July, up to 2,360. Oh, he's going for it. Wow. Fair play. The spikes offer deflecting swords to the head. Oh, wow. Swords? Are there any slash marks from deflected swords? Or is... Well, we weren't using swords at that point, no, were we? You think swords are more medieval thing, don't yeah. you? Not like a... Well, they definitely used horses, didn't they? Is that yeah. not like a slash mark? Is that like I don't know if that's just the leather cracking because perhaps I'm not storing. No, it. it's a, that's they a sword. Were there, that's they a sword. were there when I was a kid because I would imagine that stuff. This, yeah. this was one of those items. It was at my grandfather's house, and it was he had all sorts of weird, and wonderful treasures. And as a kid, this would come out, and yeah, it sounds wrong, but we would play around. With this stuff. Pretending not. to be Nazi, well, not Nazis, because well, you have no, I, have no, I had no reference. I'm talking no. like six years old. You have no idea of the significance no. of it. It's just a play item. Yeah, but the fact that he was letting us play around with it is quite weird. <laughs> really, I bet everybody wanted wanted that. You, you know, there's only kind of one of them, and you want to get hold of it. But there we go. Yeah, fantastic. Um, oh, Kirsten's and hey. Um, my granddad was an officer in the German army in the Second World War. In the German army. Interesting. 
Um, my my friend Paul, he's um he's a German Jew, and his grandfather um, defected from the war, so he would have been seen as what like a traitor or a deserter or something. Um, yeah, and, and he they still have all of his military like uh, guns and things like that that you know that he kind of ran away with and stuff. And very very hello, Lainey. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm good. I thought I'd pop on a not cry for a change. <laughs> yeah, I, I messaged Laney earlier and I said, I'm thinking of doing a random live. You, you're more than welcome to come in and I promise I won't make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How was Mum's jam? Oh, so good. Like, I like totally changed my plan for me tea because i was i was gonna have like a combi pash thing and then when the jam came i was like i've got to have jam on toast <laughs> so, <laughs> and then yeah. jam on crumbs now but tomorrow because of your eyes here <laughs> yeah. that's me every morning on crumpets with jam on every morning i can't get out of i go through sort of like phases of what breakfast i have and i've been having orange mar well orange marmalade on crumpets for about three months now are you a, are you marmalade kind? Yeah, really thick cut dark yeah. stuff. Really, yeah. and it's got a label on. It's like Daddy's <laughs> marmalade because the kids have seedless jam and like it's all watery. I'm like, yeah. oh, wedge it on. Proper stuff. Proper stuff. Have chunks in it. Yeah, yeah I love chunks of it. Marmalade is great. I have had Lex's mum's jam before, and it lasted <laughs> no time at all. So I've got another two jars now. We haven't actually started them yet. Been good. Well, we just had we just had a subscriber. Hello, Sharon, if you're watching, um, and her husband and her dog Buster um, pop round and go, "Can we buy some jam?" Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lots of people popping in saying hello. Hey, kids. Um, yeah, I mean, your mum could seriously charge a lot more. You need to have serious work because. It, it's criminal. She's given it away. <laughs> I know, and she—it's so annoying. She's like, "No, no, only pet." I'm like, "No, no telling you." <laughs> um, Pleasant Valley Picker is in. Hey, good to see you. My granddad was born in the 1890s, last generation of Victorians. After the war, he moved to Canada. I think he wanted to get as far away from war memories as possible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah can understand that my granddad i think he would have been born in 1900 and when the second world war came around he was um he he didn't have to sign up he wasn't sort of he was too old he would have been in his late 30s but the story goes that he about two months before war broke out he got drunk with one of his mates and they joined the tas just as a laugh and then came home and told my, my grandma and then two months later war dog got declared and he had to go because he was in the tas they all got called up and he had to go and fight all because he'd had a few too many shandies so wow. they, um, be careful yeah um oh we've got facts we've got facts people the pickle halb was originally introduced for the prussian inventory in 1842 and is what the old english bobby hat was based on that would make sense because it stands proud above your head it's not like your whole head fits in there yeah um and the yeah the british bobby helmet i've had experience of wearing it most of it's just air under there it, it doesn't is sit it, on your head is it just to make them look taller and to give them is there a reason it's so i, I don't know but they're stupid and impractical <laughs> a, tit on, a tit on your head everybody hated them <laughs> Sandwiches under. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah. kept in there. I can't divulge what was kept in there. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> they stopped using that type of helmet in 1916. So that would make sense after the, well, in the middle of the First World War, then. That was 1418, wasn't it? Interesting. Perhaps they realized halfway through these are really impractical. <laughs> Don't know. Have you ever seen that? Is it um, one of the first sketches from the Mitchell, that Mitchell and Webb look, where um, 
they they're in the, the Nazi uniform, you know, like with the skulls on it, and um, and they're there going like so so um so how how like we're the we're the bad guys, like yeah, we put this the skulls on the head, but but why? How come how come we're the bad guys? Why can't we have something cool like an eagle? It's like no no, no we put skulls because we're the bad guys. Like, oh, right. <laughs> we never knew. And Hugo Boss uniforms. What the hell? <laughs> well, apparently there's a there's a debate. Here we go. It's getting contentious. There's a debate over the purpose of the spike on top. Some argue it's meant to deflect sabre blows to the head, which is what we had before. Others argue it was ornamental. I personally, I think it's ornamental because I'm not sure how that's actually going to help with the. It's going to direct it more into your head, I think. Um, so it. it it's just for looking a bit weird and scary, isn't it? Looking hard. Or yeah. you just lean forward and run. You could have someone's eye out with that. Hey, Don't know. It's kind of a human dart. Get fired out of a cannon. <laughs> you know, I don't know if... Don't know if you, sorry, Lainey. I was going to say, I don't know if you guys kind of... Uh, get this but some items have a kind of gravity about them this i don't know you pick it up and you handle it and it instant it, it it affects you it's quite it's quite a thing yeah you don't, you don't get that with a kind of uh, game of monopoly <laughs> no no it just oozes history or, or a no yeah. yeah i don't think i've wouldn't it be so cool if you knew the history to it if you if you could not, just not touch it and you knew everything that it had happened and stuff wouldn't that be so cool yeah i remember looking inside there was some writing but i couldn't make out a uh a number like a conscript number or a soldier number there is some printed writing in it but i think it's just sizes and stuff there is a handwritten initial in it which is something i think it's he or something like that in the back well, i mean it looks in really good condition considering the age i mean do you sort of is, is you just leave it you don't treat it every so often or with any sort of leather no door? keep it somewhere dry and that's about it it sits yeah. in the room so it's not it's not it, i suppose it would get damaged if it was in a loft or somewhere with temperature extremes and possible know, right. you, you've looked you've made sure it's stored okay yeah we just keep it somewhere because it looks like I, I, I should look into you know how i should look after it really perhaps that's why it should be in the hands of a museum they might be like what you're keeping well, it you, on the shelf? you always you always <laughs> see these things on repair shop you know especially the leather stuff and they come in and they're totally dry yeah. and and what's it that susie she just gets that leather feed and works her magic and she can make things look absolutely fabulous but i mean that, that looks in really good condition anyway well, I love it. yeah. that's dried out yeah a little bit dry but you know just uh yeah oh, i love got... the repair shop it makes me cry oh it's brilliant all the time yeah. sit down and watch that forever yeah it's so nice um during World War II, my dad was about two weeks away from being shipped by train to Halifax to go to the UK on a troop ship. Luckily, the war ended. Yeah. If he'd gone overseas, I don't know if he'd be here. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So many stories when you get into the war. Laney, have you got family that were uh, serving, do you know, or not? Um, my granddad, well... He, he didn't say that he he was he was in the war, but um, I, I later found out some information when I was googling because I'm writing into family history and stuff. So I was googling his name and I found a war story uh, which talked about my granddad and that he'd um, they'd gone to Siena in Italy and um, it was after the Germans had been so like they were following them following along kind of behind them. And there was a clock there and it hadn't worked. And it, um, the date on the clock was like 17 something. It hadn't worked in any of the people's life, lifetime. And um, my granddad used to always, he was always fixing stuff, fixing clocks. And I always remember him. It's like when I was young doing it. 
and uh, he fixed it and we're all so amazed everyone came from miles to go and see um but i need uh, i'd love to be able to go to italy to find it to see if it's the one still running you know what i mean yeah. uh, apparently the building looked a bit like that swift house in derby where this turret with the, the clock tower on it that he fixed and um but I also have, I'm I'm in the process of getting these war records. I've, that's what I asked for for my birthday from my parents so you can send off for them. I think it's mm -hmm. like thirty pound or something. Um just to prove it because he he never talked about being in the war. He always like I never went, I never went. you know, he was very I don't know if he just didn't want to talk about it, it was too whatever, but he was he was a dispatch rider. Um so he rode a motorbike between you know, to pass a message from the major to whoever and that kind of thing is quite dangerous, really. But I think it's like really. I said, he never talked about it, so. That I think that's really common. Um, that they just don't want to go there in their head and talk about it. Both of my grandfathers were keen um, to show me the physical stuff and to share items like this. And my other yeah. granddad had a collection and helped me collect bits and bobs from the war, but they wouldn't tell me about what they did or what they saw. It, it was. I don't think no, they went. It, well, it was. It was only because it had his exact name. It had where he was from. It had what his job he did, which was at the time he was a photographer. Um, and it, like it, there was too many similarities for it not to be him. But obviously, I have to confirm it once I got these the, the records because it would say where he was, wouldn't it? Yeah. So. Uh, that will make a great series of videos if you can share what you find out. Oh, well, I've done loads of like family tree stuff, gone right back to like Bar Barnard Castle. That's probably not a best place you should talk about. But um, yeah, I went right back to there and the, the, the people who I was related to who looked after Barnard Castle and like right back to like 14 something at one point. Did you Just find out right the old Danny Dyer? No, oh, unfortunately. Is. I did have people who were from London, though, at one point. Scotland, London, yeah. But not um, Danny Dyer. Yeah. What did oh. you grow up with? Um, so, as I said, my, my granddad, William Claxton, uh, was a bit of an artist. And this is um, a picture that he drew when he was in the trenches. Of oh, the wow. trenches. Oh, that is so oh. Cool. oh my word. Yeah. That, awesome, that, that? Really, that really brings it to life to think that um, I don't know, because you've got the yeah. image of what he was seeing. Yeah. And, you know, it's just it all, it's sent a shiver down your spine. Yeah. yeah. All the folds in it as well, where he'd obviously, you know, held up in his pocket and stuff. Yeah. But that's one of those items like this that has a gravity about it because you know it was in his hand. That's his exact point of view, and he was there yeah. at the moment, and that was a real person in that. Oh, that's just yeah, tingle. Cool. <laughs> that's unique. You've got some amazing stuff, Lex. Oh, I just wanted to read this on the screen. Five minutes, uh, just quickly. Kez says a few years back, my son's school all dressed up as soldiers and nurses from World War One. My son was the only one dressed up as a German World War One soldier wearing a pickle hat. So he would have stood out. Authentic. Yeah. Fair play to him. What's the, what's the translation of that? Is it like spike helmet or something? I or? think it is spike helmet. Um, somebody in the chat might Google it and tell yeah, me I'm wrong. Right? Bad, someone's bound to know. Some, someone will Google it and tell it. Um, oh, there's, there's somebody who's popped in a little link if people want to go and find the actual issue. Purpose of the pickle helmet. Um, um, the guy who who um, built our house, so our house was built in the 30s, but he designed the Mulberry Docks. He was like a, up in the army somewhere. But the Mulberry Docks were the docks that were used on D-Day. So they're massive concrete things, which were like basically like huge concrete containers, like a plant trough or something. And they took them over and then they sank them when they got over on the France side. And those, you know, they, I don't know how many there were. They were probably like 
50 or 100 but all these massive concrete structures were used for the for the landings and getting all the supplies on so our house is acts um, built out of the hardest concrete you can imagine because we think that this the guy who owned it who designed them got all the concrete to build the house from you know the highest grade you can get from the army but uh, i mean we we found out about all this stuff because I, I think we had i think it was his granddaughter who knocked on our door one day and gave us the blueprints for our house and was telling us all about these mulberry docks and you know it's it's incredible really just the the stuff yeah. you don't know it's um iris says yes it is spike helmet so it is a oh, it's spike helmet um that's amazing lex my granddad was an artist he was in the british merchant navy but as far as i know we don't have anything that he did while in service yeah. That's a shame. Yeah. yeah i've got somewhere um again i don't know where it is my grandfather on my mother's side used to sketch i don't have anything from the war but sketches he did in the 19 would have been 20s and 30s on the beach of people just in their swimwear from that era and they are so evocative little sketches that you did while sat on the deck chair you know i have to dig those out but well all of that trench star um trench art stuff is you know stuff made out of shells and it's it's mm -hmm. just incredible how they do it you know with the various minimum of tools they just can make the most amazing things out of you know bullet shells or big large artillery shells it's incredible really yeah so bad wolf here we go from the german pickle point or pickaxe and how bonnet so it's a pickaxe bonnet there you go, there we go. <laughs> the general word for head clear. there we go excellent um so if you're just popping in we're just having a, a just a hangout really see how people are and i was sharing my helmet <laughs> Um, as you do, uh, if you're wondering why we're talking about ham and helmet. As long as you're not polishing it, that's all right, isn't it? <laughs> you get someone else to if do that. Pick up, then that. <laughs> if it's a pickaxe, then that suggests sort of slamming it down, like, like so using it maybe. I don't think so. I think so. Like if you took it off and sort of used it, like. If you didn't have any other weapon, maybe it, it could be a last resort. You know, if when you're all out, you just you just yeah, use like it. A I, uh, I, th I think use a helmet. Yeah. Yeah, I think what we first thought as it, it's just a decorative kind of a showy off thing. Look how look how grand we are. I think, you know what I mean? Because it's not very practical. Yeah. There's even a bit. I don't. It's a bit here that slides like another little ventilation shaft you can shut and open. Oh. Quite weird. Mm. What's that bit made out of at the top? Is it like just a metal it or copper? It feels like copper. It has that copper tone as opposed to the brass here. But it hasn't gone green at all. So No, it might be a copper alloy of some sort. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm just imagining smoke coming out of that for some reason. I was thinking. Yeah, it should be in some like steampunk thing or something. Yeah. I don't know. Um I mean when you I mean if you join the German army and you're all lined up wearing those, some of them must have thought we look a bit silly, don't we? With spikes on our head, but there you go. I suppose I suppose our soldiers wear great big bear skins on their heads, so that doesn't look daft at all, does it? That's yeah. true. Where on earth did that come from? Because that that is ridiculous. How look like a look like a microphone. <laughs> yes. yeah. And then brains, and all of a sudden you've got like ten kilos of water. Yeah. On your head. Yeah. Well, that they surely have never been used in any sort of combat. Surely that's just a dress uniform, isn't it? Come on. <laughs> but why? <laughs> running around with that aren't, aren't they welsh as well those soldiers aren't they they were yeah it explains it really, it? yeah i don't know if they're welsh i know i know if you have different sort of formations of button on so if you have like five groups i think you're welsh and if you have you know uh, groups of three you're scottish or something or something like that but that's how you tell the different kind of regiment regiments on um for the army 
I don't, I don't know about the bear skin. Just sharing a resource if you want to look into this stuff. Use it a few times to help with things I've picked up. I'd never pick any military up. I suppose I, it'd be good to do that. Just take a chance and go and buy something at a boot fair from someone who's selling military. Just to sort of, why not? You know, try different things and find out about it. It's the best way to learn, isn't it? Well, yeah, exactly. And, you know, if, if something sort of, I don't know, under 20 quid, why not just have a bit of fun and get something and then find out about it? It might, might be a good thing to do. Hi, Dave. Uh, we, we should all do that. We should all go off and and go, right, OK, spend 10 or 20 quid and try and get try and get some military and bring it back and find, you know, find out a little bit about it because that would make it, that would be quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, we could do. Just going to read Dave's uh, comment. Hi, Dave. Uh, my dad never wore the bearskin. He was in Trooping the Colour in 1947. Bearskins came in just after. It was mostly for show by the cold streamers, which guard the Queen. Yeah. Ah, oh, right. Okay. I've, I've seen a clip of one of those guys. Uh, I think it was during Trooping the Colour. It was on a hot day, and they just go they just yeah. with the heat and they've been they sometimes have to stand there for like up to an hour mm. at attention and you just yeah. pass out you can't yeah. cope and they just go like a log and smack themselves on the floors and the, the other guards aren't allowed to move to help them either they've just got to watch them go yeah and i think people rush in and cart them off don't they mm. yeah um I think I've just heard that my dinner's ready. Oh, okay. I've on it. I know people will be asking if it's been brought to me, but no, I have to go and have my dinner. Anyway, great uh, chat, Nick. Thanks for having us in. Yeah, well, quickly before you go, so tomorrow you're doing a live. I am doing an, any, another Any Reseller questions, which Lex has been on before, and you've been on before, Nick. And um, we've got Nick's going to be on. Um, yep. Reseller Good. White Boy. Nick Hills, you may have heard of him. He's kind of new to the game. Okay. Oh, well, you're saying oh, tomorrow. Young yeah, the young lad with the spiky helmet. Um, and we've got the reseller white boy on, and we've got the global thrifters. Um, so that's at seven thirty uh, tomorrow evening. So I'm looking forward to that. You're getting around a bit, aren't you now? Peter? You're, a, you know, international guest. With, you know. I, I like doing those because yeah, I do, I do them every couple of weeks normally, and just to sort of chat to other resellers really, and um, ask them about reselling and how to do it because I haven't got a clue. You know, so <laughs> I need all the help I can get. So. That's when, when you had uh, me, Shelley, and Steve on, you've oh, learned a lot. I've learned, a, I've learned so much in that yeah. short time. Yeah. yeah. So how can I've, find I've got you? a story since then. So sorry. How can people find you if they haven't uh, found you already, Pete? Yeah, vinegar jar, all one word on YouTube, um, and I've just been doing a bit of a tarting up of my channel as well. So, oh yeah. Oh, getting all fancy. Yeah. Well, well, it's actual. Liz has been looking at it, going, "Your channel looks awful. <laughs> Do something about it." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I've just, just been doing a little bit of a rebrand lately but yeah um tomorrow at 7 30 is when that's on so it'd be great if anyone can join and and it's really so that um they originally started so if anyone has any questions about reselling you can ask away but sometimes they sort of go into a bit of a, a reseller chat but i do try and answer any questions that are asked so if you have any reseller questions you know let us know Right, I better go because um, I can smell pasta bolognese. No problem. Thanks for popping on. No worries. Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye. See you there. And then also later, you've got your quiz. So is this um, the the league one on the Tuesdays, Lainey? Yeah, it's, it's the league one. So nine o'clock every Tuesday, and then. Normally I stay back afterwards and do just a fun one. I've got some more of that Picto Riddle stuff, so I'll uh, probably do some more of them. Man, I might have to. <laughs> I was going to do a load of listings, and I'll try very hard to list and watch, but I, I get so involved. 
<laughs> and, um, have you have you um admitted nick to laney that she is actually just like the queen and king of youtube quizzes she is the quiz master oh no oh. <laughs> you're way more professional than us i was plugging your channel on monday so yeah it's no, cool. i'm so now like i well i i don't think like i just wing it most of the time <laughs> So I wing it really well. Don't tell everyone we just wing it, Lainey. Everyone thinks we know what we're doing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we know what we're doing. Totally. <laughs> hey, Tom. Uh, the link's in our chat if you wanted to pop on. I'm sure you, if you're otherwise engaged, don't worry. Oh, well, what you got? Oh, no, um, no I, I, um, I picked out a load of things that I'm going to list tomorrow, and I just, I was just tempting Tom on with some silver. I come follow. So I'm going to do some Etsy listing of um, silver bits tomorrow. And I was in a mood to do um, things with nice stones in. That's what I fancy doing tomorrow. So, like, got some malachite. That's a green swirly yeah, stone. Cool, huh? And some tiger's eye. That's a brown swirly stone. Mm -hmm. And some lapis lads you like that's a blue swirly stone okay there you go nick i feel like you're gonna test me on this or something there will be a written exam later <laughs> yeah. okay no worries Tom. Boom. if you haven't go and check out tom's video um it's it's a really interesting video that he wasn't sure he wanted to put out as he says himself in the video um so go and give tom some support on that uh it's really interesting and i think it's um um something that maybe not to that level but we can definitely all identify with to a point isn't it and it's not just a matter of sell it by the cartload there's you know things in there that you know have some meaning and stuff and what do you do with it you know yeah, I think we all have a hoarder tendency. Well, I'm speaking for myself. I have a hoarder tendency. My father definitely does. My grandfather um, on my dad's side was classic hoarder. I've managed to, as Tom does, says in the video, turn, turn the hoarding tendencies into a business. I've built a business around one of my issues. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's a starting point for many people. Well, uh, so, like mine, mine isn't so much hoarding, but mine is definitely I love spending money. What? Well, yes. Yeah. And and thankfully, you know, I can turn that into something because otherwise I'd be screwed. You know. Yeah. Otherwise, you just keep spending and amassing stuff. At least some of it's going back out of the door, mm. right? And paying for the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. And it gives me just the <laughs> to buy more stuff, so it's it, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, hi, Mike. Mm -hmm. Hope you're okay, mate. Uh, took me four hours to listen item as I was watching pre-recorded Lex and Carla videos. <laughs> Sorry. It's the trouble with YouTube. Put on, on a, just, just mute them and go do some work instead, because that's probably better for you. Hi, Tim. I was catching up on your videos the other night. Good to see you. Sam's in. Hey. Hi, Sam. Well done, though, Tom, for putting it out there. Not an easy thing to do. Definitely. Yeah, if you've not been and watched it yet, it's Tom talking about hoarding um, and the, the associated issues that come with it. Uh, and I totally relate. It's it's something I barely have under control, if I'm honest. Um, yeah. And it didn't make me cry. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, because I'm soft. <laughs> Tom has not got a hoarding issue. He's got a listing one. Well, that well, yeah, that's one way of looking at it. <laughs> if it was all listed and sold. There'd be no issue. But yeah. that's true, actually. Yeah. We all yeah. know it's a bit more than that because uh, of all the stuff you basically inherited from family, which is way more complicated than just the junk that we tend to pick up at boot sales. Yeah. And um, my, when my grandfather passed away, my dad took on a big chunk of his 
hoard that had been collected for most of his life. And because my father, like this, I don't feel like I own this, so I'm not going to sell this. My dad feels like that about everything he had from his granddad. No, from my yeah. granddad. See what I mean? So he's just, it, it sits there. Yeah. We, we managed to get rid of some of it when he downsized a bit a couple of years ago, but he just can't let it go because it's not his. It's, yeah, bizarre. Yeah, it's like you haven't got permission to do anything with it. No. Nope. Yeah. And psychologically, he doesn't want to deal with it. Yeah. That, that's a bigger part of it, I think. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask, Lainey, have you got have you got somebody else signed up for the next um, the next quiz with a guest? Question. Yeah, the question timed one. Yeah, uh, Indy's doing it. Louise, Ooh. Indy chick. Right. She's doing it on Saturday. I think she's the last one. After that, I've got no one planned, so it'll be ending. Wow. <laughs> no, so uh, Lex is looking around the room there. <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. So chances are I, I will. No one, no one has to do it, Lex, ever. I would never want that. But I know it's not your bag. So chances are Ian and I will be popping up the entire league table at the bottom. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> I still wake up in cold sweats about that. I, I was like, well, the, the problem was I said, I'm doing really well, didn't I? About four questions, I'm doing really well. And then I got like, nothing right for the rest of it. It's like, oh. Never, ever do that. No. No, that, yeah. that's the worst thing you can do. Jinx yourself. Yeah. And never revise either. That's what I learned in exams. Don't ever revise. <laughs> you can't revise for Lainey's quiz. You can't <laughs> what was the most popular name in 1980 for girls? I said every name I know, and I got like one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you show the creatures that don't really exist in the real world. It's, yeah. Creatures that you don't think exist. Yeah. I think Carla got some of the worst ones, like, <laughs> probably. But yeah, it's amazing what's out there. Very true, Double Karma. It's not junk, it's quality merch. Yes. Oh, I need to do that, Tom. I need to send stuff in. I've been, I've clipped a few bits up. Oh, are they let, they're letting you do it now? Because mm. yeah, it was blocked for a long time, wasn't it? Yeah, I sent one in since they, they let us. Um, but I need to do another one, get rid of some stuff. But I'm still plowing through that horde of media. I'm going to list a load tonight. Um, but as I showed before, I sold a stack of it to subscribers. I had loads of messages after the video, people going, oh, I'm a Bowie fan, can I have all your Bowie stuff? I sold all the Bowie stuff to two separate subs, which is amazing. Some of it's going to the Netherlands. Uh, I sold all of the Bond soundtracks to the USA, to a collector, which is awesome. Um, all the Duran Duran stuff went, which was great. Can't think. The Queen stuff all went. It's just, yeah, mind blowing. So thanks if you did. Uh, Someone wanted to get Kate Bush on it as well. Yes, I need to find the message. Um, we may have a swapsy going on because uh, somebody is a Kate Bush collector and I'm an erasure collector and they have erasure stuff. So yeah, I need to message them back. Nice. I do. I do keep a lookout for anything, but. No such luck so far. Yeah. It's getting to the point with Erasure where there's, there's, but soon there'll be very little I don't have. Mm. <laughs> I've been buying like a crazy man. Um, Hi, Fat Girl Sewing. Hope you're well. Uh, says, I have hoarding issues too. It was bad as a teen. I kept everything. Nowadays, I collect things and every few years I use the, have you used it in the last year, this technique to get rid of things? Yeah, keeping a lid on it is is tricky. Definitely. See, well, I I tend to keep all of my collections in one place, which is there. And I don't really, other than like I've got a jewelry box, and you know wardrobe, and then there's like one thing under my bed which has got all stuff from my uni days in it, and then that's it. So I find that is a good way of doing it is just you're you're allowed to fill one place 
with bits and bobs and stuff that you want to collect, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was a big collector in my teens and childhood, and that was inspired totally by my dad's dad, who was a full-on collector stroke hoarder, to the point where he would save every bus and train ticket he ever had. It was that wow. kind of, you know. And when he passed away, they were all still there. Um, but I got from him uh, collecting matchbox labels. I used to have thousands. Postcards, I had tens of thousands. Um, and the militaria we used to collect together, stamps and stamp postcards, uh, the PHQ cards, so much stuff. Yeah, I used to have first aid covers, stamps, and uh, snow globes. Oh. I, I, I used to really like snow globes, like really cheap, nasty, tacky ones, you know, from, from seaside resorts and stuff. Like nothing fancy. It'd have to be the really nasty, cheapy ones. Yeah. Have you, have you still got any, or you you gave that up? No. When I went away to uni, like, cause our house got sold and everything, and I literally took like a couple of suitcases of stuff with me and everything else just went. So don't I don't know where they would have gone. Were you a collector, Lainey, or are you still a collector at all? No, I never. I, the only I kept things sentimental stuff like you know like um, the little cigarette card things that my granddad used to give us. I've got them. I've got like my rubella card from. <laughs> I don't know why I kept that. To be fair, or like me me um, youth when I used to go to the youth club at school. <laughs> I've got my card for that and my membership card my first uh, membership for the nightclub, that kind of thing. I've got stuff like that. <laughs> and all the stuff the kids have done, like pictures and stuff like that. But. Yeah, I think those things should be kept. And I think a lot of people regret getting rid of them. I've still got my student union cards. Oh, maybe I'll run and find them. I think I know where they are. I might go and grab those, they're quite funny. Um, I think pictures on them. I, th I can't remember what the, if the pictures are any good or they're funny. I'll have to go and grab them. I'll quickly read this. Pleasant Valley Picker is still in and says, uh, sold off my comic book collection over the past four years. Thought I'd miss it, but I don't. Hadn't looked at them in 30 years. Well, exactly. Uh, yeah. And if you use the logic of have I used this or looked at it in the past year, that's a good way of assessing whether you're actually getting any pleasure out of a collection right what's a collection if you're not if it's not on just like yours i've been where you are lex obviously and that stuff's on display mm. and that, that's one way of enjoying it right and sharing it with others collections and i had that moment when i moved out of home and realized it's all just shoved under my bed i never look at it i just keep adding to it do i want this stuff and i just got rid of it all annoyingly then i hadn't discovered ebay and i threw most of it away it was ridiculous i know right when you think of some, like I used to, um, from back in the day, like back in the 90s where I used to do, um, you know, I used to interview bands for part of my fanzine and I would get sent loads of press kits and stuff, which was really cool. So like, you know, limited edition CDs and photographs and, and signed stuff and backstage passes and things. I still got a few of them, but like, yeah, all of the stuff that, yeah. Oh. Like I've only got my Manic Street Preachers stuff and like long pigs and stuff. But I had loads and loads and loads of this stuff. Loads. Yeah. Oh, same. I oh let me see if I can go and grab my little like a little box with stuff in. One sec. No worries. I hope he comes back with some really embarrassing photographs now. I wanna see him with like <laughs> long hippie hair. Long hair. And, yeah. I can't imagine long hair, can you? I, I don't know. I I could imagine he was an art student, Laney. So you know what artsy types are like. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, probably had like. Yeah, a whole yeah, I remember what my brother was like. Because my brother went to art college as well. He went to Brighton, and he was all you know, like oh, big baggy jumpers with holes in it, and you know, long hair yeah. and proper hippie student type, covered in paint and drawings on his jeans and things. Bloody artists, honestly. <laughs> there's, there's, there's lots of dust in there, I tell you. Don't I think, know if I think Nick 
and my brother are pretty much the same age, so they would have listened to the same music and stuff like that. My brother was a proper shoegazer. Type. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Corduroy trousers, layered corduroy trousers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> There's all of my old watches in here. I never wear watches anymore. Lots of my old watches not been worn for years. Ah. Oh. <laughs> God. I did have a Virgin one. I sold the Virgin one. I don't. I didn't feel attached to that. But that is our happiest yeah. of my life there. <laughs> I've got my MVC one still. Um, because that was my best ever job. What's that? It's my epaulette one off. Oh, oh my god, I didn't know where they were. That's freaky. I've not looked at them for wow. years. Ugh, ugh. Oh, and I kept the uh, the uh handcuff key. <laughs> I wasn't supposed <laughs> I should not have put the key in the oh, thing. Hey? Why didn't you keep the handcuffs? I couldn't get away with that, but I did nick the key. Oh, here's a... <laughs> oh. That's, okay. I think, 18 I would be there. Jeez. That's not you. No, no. Not I, you. Look just, I look just... What are you talking about? I look exactly the same. <laughs> nothing like you. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Oh, there's more, there's more. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, this is me, uh, first day at art college, getting the pictures done for my student union card with a ham roll. <laughs> See, bloody artists are all weird. So I'm 19 there, I think. That's when I just got back from America. In... No. <laughs> no, it's just, oh, it's just Munich. <laughs> oh, this, this one might freak you out. Oh, actually, yeah, check this one out. Okay, okay, that's a bit more like you, but that's still weird. That, that I don't think looks like me. Oh wow, the hair. Hello, out of control. No, it's not you. <laughs> I don't know what's going. I don't know what's going on here. I'm about fifteen in this with my mate John, and we're pointing at an article in the paper with us in it. We were incredibly excited about being in the local paper. Aww. The article was about <laughs> pub parking. I can't remember what on earth it was. I think it was our local. Oh my goodness. I thought I had my actual student union card. I don't know who, whose life you've taken, Nick, but, but the person in those photos, uh, that, that's not you. That no. 19, oh, that's <laughs> 97, that's university, yeah, so. Student Union. Uh, so that was, yeah, because I, I dropped out and went back. So that was actually four years. So I think that's the first year. I'm very, <laughs> very happy about it. <laughs> Lots of people are saying you look like Rick Astley. <laughs> oh, sorry, Josh. How long have you been sat there? Oh, I think I'm Josh. Hey Josh, why don't you go and grab us a photo from 1997 of you? I've got one of when I was an hour old. Oh, right, hang on. Go on then. Ew, what the? One of my back teeth. Teeth, your teeth. Are they that big? I, I had four removed. Uh, yeah. I had top and bottom uh, train tracks, so they had to make space to push all my teeth back. Look at the size of it. Oh, it's fucking huge. All right. Yeah, you're rude. Blimey. I've never had mine out, and they've never come through. So does that mean mm -hmm. that I still get them? Well, this isn't a wisdom. That's oh, just a really? Blimey. What year is that? Wisdom usually come That's through when you're about two hours 15. old. What year? Uh, ninety nine. Uh, that's nine hours old. I had a lot of hair. Ninety nine. So that's 
<laughs> two years Nick. after that. <laughs> Nick. What? Is there someone else down there? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I can't see that. How do I get down there? How long have you been there, Sue? Oh, half an hour. <laughs> Not really, has he? About 40 um, seconds. Oh, good. Hello, Sue. You all right? <laughs> it's been ages. Oh, my God. Check this one out quickly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I had the <laughs> 90s curtains, and I had an undercut at one point. Curtains, yeah. What, what year was that? That will be 92, I'm thinking. Oh. You've seen mine from then, haven't you? I don't know. I have. I thought it were 80s, but it can't have been because my wall opened. Oh, yeah, I have. Yeah, wow. Uh, I thought that were late 80s, but it must have been about so 92. Generous, so I must have been about 33 then when I had that thing. Wow. That's such Ooh. a cool so It's machine eastern look, isn't it? Yes, totally. Yeah. <laughs> and five people earrings as well. Yeah. So you yeah I told you I used to put my slap on. <laughs> I don't know what else I've got, really. I can't um, see the chat, by the way. A chip from when I was in Vegas. Not much else. Well, um, James Moore is saying Sue's always been fit. <laughs> so there you go. You've got a fan Ooh, list. Bless. Oh, James. He's yeah. a sweetheart. <laughs> Marilyn's loving that picture. Yeah. Yeah, it were all downhill after that. Well, did oh. you see the call at the... The cards that Carla made me. No. Well, she asked me what my favourite picture of me was, expecting you know me to show one from like last week or something. But it's not. It's me from when I was like three, four years old, probably two years old. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you look really like my niece Nina in that. But I, it, I, I look exactly the same. Oh, you're there down there like that. You still got that same shaped face. It's brilliant. I am. I'm foolishly <laughs> cute. I was a disgustingly cute child. Yeah. I've just found this cool little uh, little wedding picture book from my sister's wedding. I haven't seen this for ages. And this is um, the groom and best men and me. Doing the Abbey Road. Oh. <laughs> Which one am I? Oh, I'm at the back. Yeah. Oh. There were some amazing shots. They had a really good uh, photographer. Let me just bring that up. That's my dad there. Oh. Um, that's Joe, middle-sized sister. Oh, and there's Ellen. Ellen was flower girl. She's at the front here. Oh, in a dress. Yep. <laughs> I doubt there's any pictures of me. That's lovely. Such cool pictures. Oh, she were gorgeous. Well, she still is. Is it Leland again? Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, my granddaughter, Gabrielle, you'll have probably seen pictures of her. She couldn't wait to be a bridesmaid. She's never been a bridesmaid. And my son was supposed to be getting married next month. Mm. So it's all been cancelled. It was like you can go ahead but hardly have anybody there or you can postpone to next year. And Gabs has had a thing on the fridge saying 15 weeks and counting, 14 weeks and counting. And it's changed now, 61 oh. weeks and counting. Bless her. Oh, my, my sister got married when I was 12 years old, I think, 12 or 13. And she asked me to be bridesmaid. And I was obviously, you know, moody, lex, teenager. And I was like, 
bugger off, you're not going to get me in a dress. So, yeah, I, I refuse to be her bridesmaid. And I'm still glad of that because I saw the dresses that she, you know, made her bridesmaid wear. And they were hideous. Hideous. So, never regretted that. <laughs> Most bridesmaids' dresses will be made hideous, won't they? So the bride looks better. Well, my, my sister's bridesmaid. When was that? Nick, my my class photo in nineteen eighty eight. Oh, let me let me bring that up. Hold on. Oh God, have we got to guess which one's you? I don't know if the light. I don't know if the light will reflect it enough. It's hard to make <laughs> out. Yeah. Okay. That's you. That's me. Did yeah. You have, have you got a frizzy perm? Yes. Weird uh, frizzy perm. <laughs> no, you can't really see it, can you? It's a little bit blurry, unfortunately. Oh, well. Are you still on, yeah. the, old, are you still on the old laptop? Yeah. Oh, see, so uh, you look yeah. would have done that. Perfect. I've just found some tickets, Lex. Oh, yeah, I showed you my tickets last time you were down, wasn't it? Yeah, I I've not, I've nowhere near all of them. There's some, a few, that was a good gig. Oh, who was saying about Jesus Jones the other day? I think it might be Heather. She might just be there. Town and Country Club 91. Oh, we met the band afterwards as well. James, oh, that was a good gig. Yeah, and, and when you look at the prices on them, that's the scary thing. Oh, let's have a look. James, uh, no price on it. Oh, no. Newcastle Arena. Yay. Oh, awesome. Oh, £9.50 for James. Oh. oh, I've got one of those Oasis ones, but I don't know where. You went the other day. I went on Saturday and you were there on the Sunday, I think. Oh, I may have got rid of my Oasis ticket. I don't know where it's gone. It should be here. Oh, here we go. Carter. E. The Unstoppable Sex Machine. 92. Cost me eight pounds. A whole eight pounds to go to a gig in London. I know, right? Great. Okay. This is my, my favourite ever gig. Eight Man pounds. To see the Manic Street Preachers at the Cardiff Astoria. Oh wow, that's oh. Awesome. oh, I have got it. Best ever gig. Oh yay! Should we compare? Let's compare tickets. Sunday. Ooh. Oh, I missed you by day, Lex. I know, right? Wow. I think. I only yeah. ever remember going to three concerts. Would you like to guess whose they were? Um, you saw right, let me think. Um, Leonard Skinner, Judas Priest, and um, <laughs> um Gloria Gaynor. No, none no. of them. Um, uh, the Bee Gees, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, uh, The Who, no. Oh, the Beatles. No, what oh. are you trying to say? <laughs> Rolling Stones. No, <laughs> you give in. Yeah. yeah. Genesis. Oh, Steve Ackett, Peter Gabriel. I went to this because it was at Nebworth Park, which was like five minutes from my house. So we used to uh -huh. go. And I wasn't a big fan, but I really enjoyed the gig. Um, I went to see them with Andrew again when we got together. What year was that one? 92, I think it was. Yeah. 92, 2nd of August. 22.50. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. I'm sure Phil went to see them up there in Nebworth when uh, I think we must have got the keys for the flat. So probably 78. Probably you, we got married, 1978, you went to Tempworth. What, and Genesis played? Oh. <coughs> <coughs> 
We had um, a right good concert that were fairly local. Steve Ackett wanted left and he did uh, a sort of small bijou thing and it was really good. Um, spectral mornings and that, I managed to, st it was standing room. So I managed to survive all through that and then I had to go outside and sit down. I just couldn't, I don't know how you stand at these concerts for hours. Oh man, the last, hang on, might have been this one. Yeah, Depeche Mode at the OT, we we wanted to get to the front. I say we, I, I particularly did. Um, so we we stood in the queue for about three hours and then we ran to the front and then stood and watched them setting up for another couple of hours and then stood for about 45 minutes through support and then stood for about two or three hours through that thing. We could barely walk. We were like zombies. And because the average age at a Depeche Mode gig is 45, 50, it's like Dawn of the Dead. Uh, everyone's <laughs> in it. And we're just trying to find the nearest bar because we're all in agony because our hips <laughs> are knackered. But yeah. I, when I was a teenager, I was really good at getting to the front of gigs. Like even after turning up late, like we wouldn't, we wouldn't be first in the queue and go run into the front. We'd always go to the pub beforehand, but there's. But I was really good at like, and then elbow, and then. You're, oh, you're yeah. that person at the gig, aren't you? That I want to be that, that person. Who comes and appears in front of you with a big hat on? Yeah, yeah. that's me. Sharp elbows. Yeah. Now, <laughs> this this is the only evidence and memory I have of this gig because I have virtually no recollection of being there. This was the Charlatans in the Royal Albert Hall. Oh. When you could smoke inside the Royal Albert Hall, well, maybe we weren't supposed to, but we had a box right opposite the stage. It might've even been the Royal Box and we got so wasted. I don't remember anything of it. That's the only evidence I have of being there. Might've been a good gig, I really don't know. I should imagine it would be at the Royal Albert Hall and the Charlatans. And I went a few years, well, this was a girl from art college. Oh, her name's actually on the ticket. Bought me for my birthday tickets to go and see the Cranberries. Wasn't a good gig. They, it was, no. Is that, is that 1995? Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, because we were due to go to that one in Cardiff as well. And for some reason, I can't remember if it got canceled or if we all just decided not to go for some reason. But yeah, apparently it was, bit too yeah i don't know what it was she was aggressive with the audience mm. um i was a big fan at the time and and loved dolores god rest her soul but live she was just come on get up out of your chairs and get involved and everyone was like whoa whoa why right? we're warming up but yeah it was it was quite weird oh. we did we go um went to see i think it was the red hot chili peppers in hyde park mm -hmm. And, um, oh, there was one support act. Is it, I don't think it's Chicks on Speed. Might have been. But anyway, they be they played like a few days in a row there, and um, they come on they come on stage and they were like, "By the way, you're probably going to hate us because every crowd so far has hated us." And the crowd just went, "Oh, all right then," and instantly hated them. It's like that is no way to introduce yourself, is it? Not really. It was awful. They lasted two and a half songs before getting bottled off. Oh, this this was amazing. This was in in the midst of the Madchester craziness. What so what ninety? I'm thinking January ninety one. The Great British Music Weekend. Happy Mondays were headliners, and there was oh my god, who else was there? There was like all of the bands you'd think of were there for nice. a whole night of it just breathing in the air you were stoned at that it was just bonkers um yeah i think i think that was a good gig i don't really know but this was awesome paul weller now i think it was um bournemouth why did it not say yeah bournemouth entertainment windsor hall absolutely brilliant it's around the time he released wildwood i think yeah yeah, I saw Paul Weller at, we used to have um, a party in the park. No, Music in the Bay Festival down Cardiff Bay before it actually got, like, the bay got built. Like, when it was just all fields 
and um, yeah, uh, Paul Weller and loads of other really cool bands like Catatonia, Space. That's where Catatonia and Space met. And then they went on to do like songs together. Um, but yeah, Paul Weller was headlining. That was awesome. Mm. And a really nice chap too. Yeah. Very nice. Josh, have you done much live gigging? Found... Oh, carry on then. Wow. Wow. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> That's some fun, isn't it? That is amazingly 80s hair. I think my You're sister had... my hair. Wow. Yeah, it was 1988. I had, um, yeah, I have a thin tie and 20 pairs of socks rolled down and then bigger, really. <laughs> the faces of it. I, I, I'm so jealous listening to you talking about the gigs because I've never ever been to anything. I've never been to a concert, never been to a gig, never been. It's like, I don't know why. But, well, I do know why, obviously, but like, now I'm kind of like, oh, I should just take like, hopefully there's something close enough because if if something happened in the stadium, because the stadium sometimes does it, I'm near enough. Hmm. Yeah, and and so, with with the wheelchair, you'll probably get access to an amazing spot. And, well. and, and lady, right? You're allowed to take a guest as well. Oh oh oh! What? It's not far. You know, like if, you, if you need a volunteer, yeah. depending on watching, obviously, but, you know. <laughs> I think we've had, like, the Foo Fighters there. We've had Beyonce, Rihanna and Pink. There's been, like, loads taking that and stuff, but, like, I'm sure that again. Yeah, you should do it next time when when it's possible. Just go. I love. I love going to see anything. I ever go to the yeah. theatre, go see comedians. There's there's nothing quite like the live experience. It's yeah, that amount of people all sharing an experience is. Oh my God. When I when I saw the Pixies and they played uh, "Where Is My Mind" and I when we Gavin on one side and Larry on the other side and like Larry held my hand and then Gavin put his arm around my neck and I just started crying. I was like, this is beautiful. Yeah. So sad. <laughs> it's like all the times I've been to see Depeche Mode and you get to personal Jesus and when the whole crowd sings the 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 classic lines and that reach out and touch face and all that yeah. stuff. It's like your heart oh, it's like, whoa, you're part of a one thing and it's like oh Yeah. Um was it Claire Borden was just saying about Glastonbury? Oh, I went to Glastonbury um, it's in 95 or 97 where Pulp was headlining and they played, um, is it, you know, Sorted for Ease and Wiz? And he yeah. was like, is the way the field is meant to feel or just 20,000 people standing in the field? And we were yeah. like, yes! Yeah. <laughs> um, I, know that. I don't know how they got away with some of it. I bought that single and the cover, it showed you how to fold it into a drugs pouch. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? How are they getting away with this stuff? Um, anyway, Josh, I was going to ask, have you ever done much gigging? Is that your thing? It's it's not my thing, Nick, no. Loud music, you know, no. Not my thing. Okay, fair enough. Oh, Josh. <laughs> uh, DB, Damien, best gig I went to was Muse at the newly opened Wembley Stadium. I've not seen Muse. I was massive into Muse for the first two albums and then kind of lost touch with it really but yeah. yeah uh see what else we've got in the chat oh and also with glastonbury very annoying thing there was one saturday night and they had primal scream radiohead and the prodigy all like on at the same time oh why would you do that why oh for a moment then i thought what a what a run up to the headliners <laughs> no bloody same time so one on the pyramid stage one on uh, the enemy stage and then one in the dance tent that's it yeah cats we want cats apparently <laughs> there's josh's cat <laughs> oh. sorry adam he's disappeared you get a picture of my cat and that's it she's gone somewhere yeah you can't tell the cat what to do <laughs> yeah, the, the cat owns us <laughs> 
so true. Uh, Sam's a Paul Weller fan. Yeah, I mean, his track record, when you think it goes all the way back to the late 70s, early 80s with the jam, and then yeah. he went off on that whole style council thing, and then his solo, which has been consistent ever since. It's just amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, oh, hi, Hugh. Nick, have you or any of the others met any famous stars from the 80s? In the 80s? Or, or any famous stars? Um, well, I've met loads. Loads. <laughs> I, I, but all, I mean, I've, I've met like so many 90s indies bands because that's what I did. Yeah, and, through work, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I used to have bag breaks with the Gallagher brothers and, you know, I've smelt Bobby Gillespie and spoken to Bernard Butler and, you know, like yeah, it was cool times, um, and you have to keep you cool, don't you? You can't go. I love you. It's absolutely <laughs> weird. Uh, yeah, that would have been awesome. I mean, what a time for music. I'm at East Seventeen. And to be that age and and right in the. But I don't know if I should that. Was that you met East Seventeen? Um, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Someone had to. We were staying at a hotel down the beach here because we were doing like a tour of. Uh, tour of the schools and stuff when that oh. first song came out it was were, were they doing like a hey kids don't do drugs thing <laughs> should be quite <laughs> ironic <for that. laughs> i've not met any music stars yeah, only stars i've met is uh barry elliott who's that chuckle brothers oh <laughs> I valued his house. Really? Oh. <laughs> I met him, had a coffee, met his wife. Lovely. Oh. house. He's gone now, bless him. Yeah. Uh, Neil's in. Hey, Neil. I remember nothing of the 90s, especially the Glastonbury. So many gigs I can't remember. To mm. my shame, I've still not done Glastonbury. We do want to do it. Um, so that's something that's on the list. Well, first first time I went, it was sixty five pound for a weekend ticket. Sixty five quid. You can barely get into a gig for that now. <coughs> yep. Crazy. Uh, Tom never really did gigs, but so many DJ sets. Creamfields was amazing. I bet it was. I I um New Year's Day one year. I when I was in Bridgend, I got on the train um, six o'clock. New Year's Day morning, uh, went to Camden Pally and did an all-day rave in there. Oh, excellent. Yeah, it came out, it's like six o'clock in the evening, it's still light, and you're like, whoa, what's been going on? It completely, like, mashes your header. But, yeah, that was pretty cool. And Camden Pally is such a good venue as well. It's so cool. I don't think I've been to that. To that yeah. um, Maximilio, uh, Ever go to Rhythms of the World, Nick, Banging Festival? Yes, that's uh, a festival held, or used to be. It's not happening at the minute here in Hitchin. We went every year that we lived in Hitchin, pretty much. It used to be just gigs all around the town, and then they had it in the Priory grounds, and you had to pay to go in. It was more of a festival vibe then. Um, but yeah, they used to get some pretty good headline acts in, um, but it would be also loads of local bands and loads of school stuff and Ellen used to go with her dancing troupe and do yeah. stuff. Andrew used to run a majorette troupe and they'd go and perform there. It was a proper, you know, all the way from that up to some big band that would headline. It was cool. Uh, Sam was just saying like, oh yeah, we should all go to Glastonbury. If we could, if we could get tickets, that would be amazing. But it's so hard to get tickets nowadays. Yeah. Exactly. It would be awesome. Yeah. We sell it at Glastonbury. Well, Neil remembers Camden Palais. Yeah, it's a cool place. <clears throat> Met loads of famous guys working in Nando's. 
Nando Stevenage, that's just down the road from me. Uh, from ex Prince Harry to Frank Lampard. Prince Harry was in Nando's. Hmm? <laughs> chicken somewhere. I guess so. When I when I worked in the cinema in Croydon, um, we had a few uh right, was it Estelle from Eternal or Esther from Eternal? Mm -hmm. and she was going out with Shane from Boyzone. They used to come in quite a lot. She was a right cow, right cow. Um, Ian Wright used to come in with his son all the time, and he was absolutely lovely. He used to stop and sign autographs for people and have his photograph taken. He was such a nice man, really, really lovely. Yeah, you get that vibe from him when you see him. He's just always having a laugh. Yeah, honestly, so, so nice. It, you, you know, he'd be walking out of the cinema and it would take him half an hour to walk out the door. But yeah, he was he was up for it every week. He was a lovely, lovely guy. Hi, Bob. Miss Sula Montana. Cool. Ooh. Well, I guess we better think about wrapping this up so Lainey can get ready for the quiz. <laughs> You'll yeah. be up again soon. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've had tea or, or, or dinner yet. <clears throat> Mine's probably in the dog, if we had a dog. Um, soon, soon. <laughs> hi, Aid. Yeah, he's liking the glass. Yeah. Right. You might make a talk when at tent this time, Lex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it was it was uh, the wading through the rivers of mud at Glastonbury and then losing your shoes and then sleeping your feet outside the, the tent because you were just like there's no point in me getting changed or anything i'll just live for five days in the same clothes because it's just disgusting Ugh. horrible time <laughs> sean served robert plant and his band when he managed a pub at st john's wood that's quite epic that's cool um, i've even decided to get rid of his bed divan once because uh, he said, I'm going to get rid of it and I'm having my mattress on the floor. And he had it so that you open bedroom door like that and mattress were right in front. So he'd stagger in and just go boop. Sounds perfect. He often <laughs> didn't make it all the way onto the mattress. <laughs> just with legs sticking out the door. Are you working there, John? <laughs> no, I'm just being messaged and there's a family plan or something going on for next week. Ooh. It's not crazy. Uh, a very no, a very socially distanced barbecue, apparently, or something. Sausages on very long sticks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we'll wrap up, and uh, I'll go and see if I have some dinner. Um, <laughs> I didn't plan to be on this long. <laughs> uh, lovely to catch up with you all. Um, please check out everyone's channels. I'll try and remember to put links in after the fact. We have Lex, which is Dad Biscuit. Laney, oh, Laney, it's actually got the name there. Big Girls Really Do Cry, who's going live at uh, nine, right? And Josh is yeah. JD Network. Yep. Yep. And Sue is Sue's Piles of Shame. Good stuff. Thank you for the company. Yeah, Lovely. Nick. Thanks for joining me. It would have been a bit dull with just me and my helmet. <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> All right, thanks for popping thanks in. What you were tuning in for? <laughs> bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. bye.